Hey folks, Swip here, and welcome back to the Hardcore Minecraft world where I have been so busy here grinding away a bunch of wool for some projects coming here. And as you can see, we are up to level 38. I've been smelting stuff down like crazy, just doing the things around the world, trying to get the experience so we can do a lot more enchanting. So I hope y'all are excited for today's episode. Please be sure to click that like button down below if you are, and sheepies, stay inside your pens, and the chicken sheeps as well. We gotta shear them too. We are almost up to six stacks of wool right Right now and we got about a half stack of the brown wool with a little bit more in there too so that's gonna be absolutely awesome for today we're gonna be making some major changes around this world here and look at all of that stuff and we're gonna be needing a lot of those guys here in a little while but let's go and see what we can get enchanted now today for the build that we're doing i am really on the lookout here for some feather falling if we can get that uh, feather falling too would be okay it'd be better than nothing but I really want to see if we can get Feather Falling 4. Also, this chest piece really needs to get some enchanting rocking on it, and maybe the sword. We're able to enchant three different things here, so let's start with the Unbreaking 3 chest piece and see what we get on there. With Protection 3, that's pretty good. I'll hold on to that one for now. That's going to bring us up to uh, two pieces with Protection. We got a Fire Protection and a Blast Protection. Almost perfect. We're going to see if we can get lucky with the Feather Falling boots. No, just the Protection 4. Could be worth replacing the fire protection on there with it. But you know, after we almost died in the lava last time, I think we roll this off. Ooh, I'm seeing a feather falling three here. That's only two levels as well. So I think I might do that for now, just so we can at least have it in there. Oh, that's going to help a lot. Those boots are looking pretty dang good here. Let's do that right there. We just got to get feather falling four. But the plan for today is we are going to be building a windmill i'm super excited for it and what do i want on here i want to keep blast protection on the helmet that is an expensive thing 17 levels right there but i think we gotta do it we're down to level two all the levels that i got are now gone that's okay and my friends it is time for the next field planting what do we want to do today if we're trying to keep it even i think it's time that we add another carrot field over here or we could expand the sunflower field that we had started last time yeah let's do that let's get the sunflowers rocking today Time for the good old fashioned bone meal and the two tall flowers over here. Now it's very cool that we're doing the sunflowers here because I have something absolutely awesome to be showing y'all that I've been working on here. I love Minecraft graphics. I think they're so cool. I really love the pixelated style, but there's a few things like the foliage in the game that I wish could be a little bit more bushy, you could say, or a little bit more, oh gosh, that's a hole that scared me. A little bit more alive and abundant than we currently have inside of Minecraft. So I've actually been working on a little bit of a texture pack. Well, we'll get to that one here after sleep the night away and uh, finish planting down the sunflower. I'm super excited to hear your feedback on this thing. That should do it for the sunflower field itself though. That's feeling pretty abundant. Thinking from here, we can just dot a few of these leaves around to give it a little bit of a border because otherwise it just feels like a giant patch of sunflowers with no reason behind them. And this way we still have the little pathway over to the pond too. So that's going to be awesome. Now everything inside this pack I've been working on is very experimental, but let's go a three, a two, and a one, and a dot. Done. Check this out right here. So I've added some variation to the sunflowers. I've made the bushy leaves come back in a very vanilla friendly way. So they basically all of the leaf blocks that we have inside of Minecraft have this little bit of extra tiny little flare to them on the outsides. I love that. I think it's so very cool. I've changed the dandelion. So there's some more variation to them. Sometimes we got the regular little ones. Sometimes we've got these big old guys over here. And the big thing is all the sunflowers. There's three different variations to them, which I love. Potatoes are the same. Wheat has had a giant overall to it which is very cool i think in my opinion but i know a lot of people on twitter were like eh, that's a little too much basically it comes out of the block here let me know what you think about that let me know what you think about using this pack here i think it's going to be super duper fun moving on to the next step though we're going to be playing with this texture pack here and getting started on the windmill which i'm super excited about and actually no i do have it on me haha -ha, scaffolding that's going to save us today i thought the perfect spot for the windmill would be up here on top of the hill i don't want to line it up perfectly with this guy where we have the mine entrance so I was thinking we could step it back a little farther over this direction. Maybe we honestly do it over the top of the pond because if we need to fall down, we can fall in the water. It'll be great. Now the base circle I'm going to be going with here is the three, one, and three little circle that we got going on. And I think for this, we're going to bring it up 10 or 11 blocks. I want this guy to feel like a much larger fantasy windmill blade for ourselves than the typical wooden ones that I do. So that's why I was gathering up all of the wool so we can make this look absolutely beautiful. And we probably need to have a way to get all the way up here. So let's go into the middle and I think I can just drop scaffolding down. No, no, you cannot. I thought that's how scaffolding worked. Thinking is we could work ourselves from something about like right down here 
And then we can bring in a full block of spruce and we can do another stair right off of here to give ourselves a little bit of an extra jut out from the wooden, the cobblestone structure we have so far. And then bringing in some acacia trap doors because I love that red color we have on the enchanting tower. So I wanted to start bringing that in some more of these taller structures and adding that extra just color flare to this area, what we're working on. And of course, one of my favorite detail blocks is we're going to use note blocks going all the way around. Definitely got lost track of building there and was just like, oh, it's really late now. We should probably sleep. So in the morning we go, it's time to just kind of work on building these things up. The way I found some inspiration from this one recently was I've been playing a lot of Age of Empires 2. So this is a little inspired off of some of the windmills in that game over there. The windmill blade itself is going to be really fun to be working on. I'm super excited for it, but it's definitely going to be a headache. So we're going to need a lot of scaffolding to get this working. For now though, we can just get most of the little starter bits right out here with the little grindstones. And then off of this block right here is where we're gonna be building the blades itself. Probably worthwhile to finish up the top of the tower over here before we do the blades. So we have a little bit more room to work. And if we might need to bump it forward one, we can do that as well. But I wanna add another layer of those acacia trap doors. And the top of this is pretty much just gonna be acacia slabs going all the way up to the top. Base ring in, going all the way around here, decided to incorporate some stairs, some slabs, and lowered the corner edge down there a little bit. And I used some spruce on the corners here, so we are going to have a bit of an X shape to the top of the roof just to help break it up from being all acacia. I think this will actually save us quite a bit here. So it's gonna be like that little guy in there, then we bring this one up there, and we're gonna slowly inch that up to the top. Now, as we're building this, I did wanna ask y'all what you thought of fun adventures we could go on inside of this world, or fun challenges we could start to look forward to, because I realized these latest episodes have turned more or less into, hey, let's just build a bunch of stuff. And I really wanna keep the rest of the game inside of this Let's Play series as well. So if you have any ideas on that, please be sure to let me know. Up at the tippity top here, now adding a few spruce fences just for some extra pokey bits, and then coming in here with these lovely little guys right there. And of course, since we are on the very top, I'm thinking we gotta finish off with a little bit of spruce. Now for the fun part is uh, we need a lot of buttons because we can't forget this fancy detail bit of adding the buttons all over our build, but I think we might be able to do something a little bit different here of just buttons on the spruce bits and then everything else we can turn into the the pressure plates over here and there we go the roof of the tower is completely finished up now we just need to do the windmill blade and can i land in the water down here got a clean shot down let's take it it is very cool coming out of the house on a bright new sunshiny morning here seeing that tower over there but there's a lot that i think we can still do now the windmill itself for this dude is going to be operating most off of oak fences and white wool because i think that'll be great for us here Trying to make sure there's no mobs around us. Let's see if we can't pillar up with some scaffolding. Oak fences starting around the entire interior over here for ourselves and then bringing in some white wool. I wanna have this be, the goal is to have six different blades out of it and we're gonna be making this up as we go. So I think if we do one coming down to here and we start working some wool coming all the way down like this and just do fences on all of those and then we can maybe do some wool behind these fences and falling down of course, can't forget that part. Blade number one in, I think we gotta mess around with with the rest of these and see what else we can do. Let me try and get a few more on and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, three blades in here and I think I need y'all to bear with me on this one. I think I got something I'm liking here. I just need to get them in the rest of the way around. We've reached a wee bit of an issue here as we're building these up is the entire thing is one too close to the tower itself, but I think we can get away with it. Getting rid of the scaffolding, all six of the blades are in and I like it from up close which is typically where you're not gonna be viewing a windmill. So coming all the way back here, that top section, I'm actually okay with that. But I think there's something we could do to make it even better when we are up close, like in this general area, instead of out in the ocean, because I think out in the ocean, that'll look really cool. And that involves this crafting table right over here with a whole bunch of these banners. Let's see what we can do. I'm thinking on every single block of wool we have, we put a banner. Or you know what, at least these front facing ones. And oh my lord, our banner's expensive. <laughs> so I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need eight more banners. Oh gosh, we might have to shear some more sheep. For one final time, coming down the scaffolding here, gathering it all up and seeing what this looks like. I threw some carpets on top of everything and I like that. I think that works out pretty well. What I'm hating now though, is this bottom section. I brought some extra cobblestone over and I'm thinking if we go one, two, and maybe the raise the corners up like this, just so we can give some extra like oomph and size to this whole thing. We can build a really cool ridge line back here eventually for this cliff face, which could be sick to have. That's starting to help us out here, but then I think we're also out of the puddle. Take two is we're gonna also need some extra stuff around here on the base. I don't think that's enough on its own. 
Obviously, we've got to fix up this little pond area over here, but I think something like this could help us out a lot. I really like that it has a bit more of a rounded shape going in and then comes back out on the top. We got a giant windmill blade up there now. And how far do these banners track for? I always love using banners, but I hate that they disappear. So we get them all the way back to here, which is really cool. But right back here on the far side of Creeper Rock, they disappear. But we get that versus this, which that looks really cool right there with all the banners on it. Spend a wee bit of time detailing the structure out, mostly the rocks down below, and added in two little uh, lilacs right now, windows right over here, which are looking really, really good. We've got a temporary door over here, but there's more that I want to add to this structure. I'm just not quite sure how I want to do it yet. But I would love to have some building attached to the outside of it that's kind of interconnected with this dude right up in here. It's going to have to be rather strange short since the windmill blade comes down pretty far close to the ground but that's something we can work on a little while later i think i need a bit of a break from building on this one so i can actually come up with a cool idea which leads me to something else we can do today as we're going to be needed on a lot of these bones right over here we've got to head out into the taiga forest before we head off one last thing i should show y'all is that i brought the landscape out really far over here so we can actually fit that structure in none of that stuff was in there beforehand so we will eventually have to do the cliff so it actually blends in now the taiga forest has a very special friend that i'm hoping to find that i added in through this resource pack today so big thank you to ryuma for creating these ones for me i really do appreciate it but we've got to come out here and find them i made it so that it's about a one in ten chance to find either of them and there's two that we got to be looking for hello fox have you seen my dogs oh my gosh is there a flower forest over here oh it's beautiful also i changed the lollipop alliums to those guys and i love them might have gotten a little distracted gathering up some flowers, but hey, look, there's so many more up here. No, we'll get them later, but look how beautiful they are. I love this texture. I made this thing years ago, and it's just so good. Anyways, wolves. Do we see any wolves? We see bees. There's another beehive in here. We see pigs. No wolves. No wolves at all. Further into the taiga we go, and hopefully being able to find some back here. Anything around us? They spawn in taiga biomes, right? I feel like this is where they are. It's like any type of a forest, you can get wolves in it, right? This isn't just foxes, not just going on a dead end. Oh, it's a nice baby cow. Hello, have you seen any wolves in the area we're protecting your child against? No, no, okay, they'll just keep looking. Oh my gosh, I think I see one. Please be the right ones. Anybody, any good boys out here? Any good boys that want to come home with me? No, nobody, you're all just regular wolves. Regular wolves, we're still on the hunt. This is going to be a hard one. We got to find the special rare colors. Whoa, this is a really cool little biome. Just a splat of jungle right in the middle of the taiga forest. It just cuts right in here. That is so cool. I keep being on the lookout for sheep to see if I can't find any wolves chasing him throughout these biomes because they're so attracted to try and kill him. I saw some more puppies over here. Anybody? Anybody? Any, any other colored ones? Please? Hello? Do you have any friends in the area? Oh, God. What happened to his eyeballs? Oh, no. Be nice. Oh, you're happy again. You're happy again. Sorry for asking about friends. We won't do that with you anymore, okay? I have scoured that spruce forest as about as much as I possibly can. I'm going to try the regular forest over in this area, being the oak and the birch trees, and see if we can't get lucky in here. I see some dogs, and I see some dogs with different colors. Wait, what's going on over here? Is that both of them? Is that both of them? Hello? Hello? You look like a different color. Which one are you? Are you Nova? Is this Nova? <gasps> Wait, be my friend. Be my friend. No! Please? Yes, we have a friend. We have a friend. Who are you? Is that the same color? This one's playing hard to get over here. Where are you? Where did you go? This dude's on a mission. Oh, it looks like it is another Nova. Hi, we can get two of you. This way we can have a Nova on the Mushroom Island and we can have a Nova with us back at the farming village. We still need to go find Coda though. Of course, he's the harder one to track down, but look how cute they are. I love their skins. We need to get some different colored collars on them though. Come on, pups. Let's go this way. Where are you guys? There you are. Look at you little twins. Oh boy. This makes way too much sense with the dogs of Coda being the one who's much, much harder to track down as he is the notorious one for a dog parker just being like, bye guys, I'm gonna go hang out over here. More wolves, more wolves, any, any red ones? Any red ones? Anybody? No? Nope, doesn't look like it. This is the last spruce forest I'm gonna be checking today. If it doesn't all happen now, it's fine. It just means we'll go on another expedition in the future to find our other best friend. Time for a little campground session with our puppos in the wilderness. I'm starting to think it wasn't meant to happen today. We got Nova here. We got two Novas, actually, if hopefully they don't run into those berry bushes right over there. But it's about time that we find our way back home. We've been out here for over a half hour looking for these dogs. <laughs> Looks like we've stumbled across a village in the forest that I had no idea was here. Is it just you? Or is there actually a village? Oh, yeah, there's more down here. Look at that. 
oh wow, this is a really cool little spot in here. I love when you find the villages just in the middle of the forest. I think that's so fun. And I'm taking that, and that, and all of this. Of course, the bell. Gonna use that paper and compass here very shortly, and definitely gonna need this guy in a few minutes. Of course, I'll take a blast furnace, why not? Ooh, wait, bricks. Mm, stop defending the bricks, just give them. Turned out to be a fantastic little excursion for ourselves today. There we go, the windmill is right over the edge of the hill, and oh, it looks so good with the enchanting tower right over there too. Now, don't get me wrong, they look totally different style-wise, but I kind of love that about it. It makes the enchanting tower over here feel very unique and magical and mystical if it stands out against everything else that we have. You know, from this angle, doesn't look half bad without the banners loading in. A little bit of a change of topic here, my friends, is we've got, are gonna be taking little Nova over here. Well, one of the Novas. A little bit of a change of pace here for today, my friends. Before we get back to building up the rest of the windmill, we're gonna be taking Nova number one. I've gotta get their collars fixed, actually. We've gotta give them nice magenta collars, of course. Come on over here. There you go, there you go. Everybody's fixed up. All right, you puppy are coming with me. Before we do much at all over to the moosh land that we're working on, I wanna create a map of it so we can track our progress as we're going. It's a very cool thing that I see a lot of other people do, and I think it'd be super fun to do it ourselves. Now, you little missy gotta get inside the portal. That's the one place I wish you didn't go to. Okay. <laughs> there we go, everybody made it safely through, let's go. Over in the glorious Mushroom Island, I think we're gonna leave her down here at the edge next to our bed for now so she can just hang out where we're looking out over the lovely water, keeping track of the Mushrooms and make sure the villagers are doing their thing. But what I've gotta do now, my friends, is we've gotta make a bunch of maps. I didn't make them yet because I don't know how many we're gonna need, but I wanna go on the smallest scale that we possibly can do so we can create as big of a map wall as we can. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to do all this stuff over here. All we gotta do is run to the edge right there and pop open a new map for ourselves. And we got this one, which is definitely not worth a full map. I don't think I've actually gotten through this ship yet. I'll have to come back and check that guy out. I do love me a good shipwreck. Four maps down so far and dang, mycelium on a map is insanely bright, but I think uh, we're gonna need a lot more maps than just the four over here, which I'm kind of excited about. I'm okay with having a big map wall. It means we've got a giant project ahead of us. So sad to be using a map down here for like five blocks of mycelium. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to expand off of that some reason to make this whole map a purpose instead of just being a bright blue corner. Looks like I might have guessed correctly needing the 12 compasses over here because we are quickly running out of space for all of these. Oh, try to drown. Oh, try to drown. I don't like you. I don't, no, I don't like this. But I do like a trident. Any trident? No, it's just Ryan Flash. Bummer. Okay, leaving that behind. Last map coming into play now as soon as we get to the north end of this guy, and I'm really hoping at this point in time I did it correctly, because then we just gotta throw him up on a wall and we're done. And it is very dark and scary out here right now. Please get me back to the land. Thank you, Dolphin, you're the best. Woo, flying on. My thought is for now, the best place to store this map is gonna be down in the villager training hall, and we can eventually add them as decoration bits around this entire area. When we have some blank space, we can just throw up updated renditions of our global map. For now, since we can, well, let's put it on this wall, right behind all these big chests that are blocking the way. Now let's see if my plan worked to get all these in here correctly. I hope it did. The plan is coming together. Check this out right here. Using the inventory, we were able to manage so much of that, and that is our full island. You know what? Looking at this map now, this is gonna be a very doable project. I'm super excited to get moving on this thing. We just gotta start automating some stuff so we can actually get the resources to, you know, transform this entire island because, uh, we still don't even have an enchanted diamond shovel. How are we gonna transform this entire place without an enchanted shovel? Heading back up to the windmill now, we gotta finish out this structure here, and I was thinking we could add a little bit of like a lean-to going in an L shape around the structure so it's not just standing on its own. I try to not have towers really standing on their own like this. I really love to add just an extra little bit of something connected into them. So if we were to take some of this guy, maybe we bring ourselves like that and do like a large door over here for a big entrance into it with some trap doors or something like that. And then I think we could have a wall coming right back throughout here. So that gives us a five wide interior. And instead of going all the way around, maybe we wrap it to about right here. And I think this will come out to 11 blocks, which should be enough space for ourselves. Now, recently I was watching one of Jeremy Boy's videos and I saw this really cool roof design that he did for a window in the roof. And I absolutely loved it. So I think we're gonna try incorporating something like that into this structure here too, but we're gonna have to be very careful not to being so close to the top that it's gonna feel like this is just connecting right into the base of that tower. 
Adding our little fun archway to the front so we can have a super wide door right in here with the little bits of the spruce wood. We can go all the way like that. And then I believe on top of this, what could be kind of fun is to bring in a bit of oak wood. So that's gonna be connecting up here on the corners, which honestly, we might be able to just take this down on the front. This will help to break up the cobblestone face that we have over here and make it feel like a different structure to being actually connected to the tower. Something that was added onto the side of it and changing up what we normally do with being slabs for the roofs everywhere. I figured we could bring up some full blocks and I also thought it'd be kind of fun to incorporate some granite into this roof. Keeping with that same red idea that we had over there, I thought it could be a nice little fit for us. Accent walls are in place and now it's probably time that we tackle the roof. So that'll be where things get really interesting. We're gonna need a lot of granite stairs and slabs for this one. But first let's get the trim in going all the way around with some spruce wood. Now for the fun part of adding all of the granite stairs into the middle and then working on this big old window design that I absolutely loved from Germ, which I think would be great to offset something about right over here so it's not smack dab in the middle. Hopefully it's not. I haven't really measured this thing out yet. It's not, but it is indeed absolutely massive. No, we don't need that there. Ooh, goodbye glass pane. Oh no, I do have silk touch. I forgot about that. Now where this gets really fun is we can stretch ourselves out here with some slabs, some trap doors, and the works going all the way around like this. And then at that point, we can introduce some granite slabs on top of it where these are going to be inching themselves all the way up to the top right here. And the purpose of this whole thing here is that we can completely break up the shape of this roof and it gets that awesome little window right in here to see inside. I thought that was such a fun idea. Then I'm thinking on the backside, we can kind of do something similar to that with bringing this guy right up all the way to here. And then we just take some spruce slabs going all the way around and work the slabs and the granite slabs going all the way up to there as far as we need to. Which will lead us right up to about this point here as well. And I think I want to grab a little bit more spruce slab action to fill in that bit right there. But that is looking really cool from the top. And this little section, yeah, we'll just leave the granite in there. But that is a pretty sweet looking house. Oh, I love this thing. I've just got to decorate it out now. No major interior decorations done yet on the house back here, but I've got this little bit in kind of dividing the side room over there. We've got the roof in, blocked out a lot of the granite, so we just got a spruce roof in here. And then I realized we need to get a milling setup of sorts, so I got this kind of supporting beam in there that we'll get sorted out here soon. But what I was thinking next would be kind of fun to be working on would be to add our pathway in, which I thought snaking this one down the hill a lot could be a great way to make it a lot more unique. And we can actually do a little bit of terraforming over here to add some extra pizzazz and whatnot to it. Getting the last little bits of course dirt in the pathway and this should be doing it for us right over there. So we kind of bending it around that way, coming back into here and then it merges right into the main pathway that we have. And ooh, I need to start doing some more of those torches underneath the brown carpet too. Uh, I've done it my friends. We've got an awesome pathway over here. We've got another field full of the little flowers right in there and the interior is mostly decorated actually. Funny enough, I've been able to get this thing done pretty quickly in here. What I was going to do for the last little ad is turning this into a little bit of a grain spot or something like that. That wheat has already been processed because we've got this whole millen section right back in here. Not too sure about it so far. I think it's going to be a-okay. The upstairs, I'm going to leave blank for now because I really don't know what I want to do with it so we're just gonna leave it like nothing's up there for now it's totally fine right and we got our nice little cart inside of here in the center but i think it turned out really nice i love these little support beams going back and forth with the trap doors all the way across there i really feel like that helps to bring more of an industrial feel of some sort of a workshop area into the structure from all the way back here, I absolutely love this guy. That roof overhang up there, I think would work better on a larger scale structure, but I think it works okay here. It just could be something that could be improved just a touch. So that's a-okay with me. I'm gonna add a few little more bushes right along there, but this is looking awesome. This may be one of my favorite windmills I have designed in a very, very long time, but it feels very much like it's not situated in the environment right now. And I think one way we can fix that is by adding some trees behind it. And I was thinking we carry forward with the same pattern we'd been doing so far on all of the birch trees right over there with the granite walls in the middle. And I was thinking for the spruce leaves, we can do the dark oak fences. But come on, Nova Bean, let's go gather some leaves for ourselves. We've got to go on a mini adventure here. One headed off this direction to chop down those birch trees, and then we gotta go to the far side and chop down a bunch of the spruce trees as well. I've got a few extra iron ingots for ourselves, so I'm gonna try and get like six stacks of each. That should be good for now. And that first year did not last long at all. Okay. 
Ran down in a cave to light some things up and get some iron and get him Nova. Yeah, kick it butt. Good job. Good job, girl. Good job. That's going to wrap up the Spruce Leaf Gathering as well. Nova and I did a fantastic job out here. We were trying to be on the lookout for any more puppy dogs in the area, but unfortunately did not find any. That's okay, though. We've got some trees to build back at home, which means it is time for a good old-fashioned time-lapse mode building up some trees. What do you think here, little Nova? Isn't it looking pretty fantastic up here? I am so happy with all of these trees behind. I can't wait to add some more throughout this area. Add another spruce one down there because I want to make it not feel like they're just behind the windmill, but we'll get some more added in here around. I need to find some taller ones, and I also want to get some oak trees of sorts that we can mix in with these two to get even more splashes of color throughout. But holy cow, I am so happy with this, how this build turned out. Hope you all did enjoy today's episode. Please be sure to click that like button down below if you did. It helps me out a ton my friends so be sure to subscribe as well if you're brand new and my friends i will catch you on the flip side